What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. Well, as we thought yesterday together as a community, we had a suspicion that Wall Street would fill the gaps and they certainly did on the S&P 500, NASDAQ and other major indices and stocks. Now the question becomes, where are the options? Where is it best for Wall Street to end the week? We've got Fed Powell coming out with a speech and we also have some very interesting zones to talk about. Stay tuned guys, a lot to cover in this video. All right, guys. Well, welcome to the recap of the markets around the world for the 23rd of September, 2021. And we're looking here at a heat map of the S&P 500. We always like to start here. It gives us a bit of an instant lie of what happened yesterday. And you can see some key stocks. And we do love blue chip stocks if we can get into them at cheap prices. Because guess what? They're blue chip, they're solid, and they do have some good gains over time and you know you can't question whether apple's performed well over the last couple of years it certainly has let's take a look at salesforce here 7.21 percent financials very strong energy very strong and you can see that all from here the fang though lackluster so actually it wasn't really a huge driven market by the fang it was driven by a whole bunch of different sectors let's take a look now at the indices and what happened here was really interesting we were live streaming coming into the session and the market actually was up quite a lot more in the futures. Then it dropped, especially the NASDAQ, right down to a support line we'll be taking a look at later on this video, opened there, and then of course rallied for the gap close. And it's what we suspected would happen in the previous day. The market was breaking past key resistances. It was going to try to close this gap. And now we see that zone uh, where the bills and the bulls and the bears will really try to fight it out on Friday. And there's quite a few reasons to make us think that maybe Friday will be a declining day. And we'll talk about that soon. So the market ended up rallying, moved across for the rest of the day and held up pretty well. A little bit of selling uh, near the end there from uh, Wall Street, but not, nothing too spectacular. If we take a look at the sectors, pretty much in line, energy, financials, agriculture doing well as well. And then we had all the defensives, utilities, consumer staples, healthcare, really not doing anywhere near as well as the, the rest of the market. If we take a look now at the CBOE put call ratios, this is also something we're looking at at the moment. The only real reason we're looking at it was we use this as a bit of a contrarian indicator. Usually, if you are finding a bottom of a market, let's say, and coming back up, the put call ratios, a huge amount of puts will be entered because everyone gets fearful and they all start trying to short the market. At that point, you get a high put call ratio reading. Now, if you go back through history, you will usually have much higher put call ratio meetings. So over here, you'll notice the put call ratio got incredibly high. Over here, during the, the peak of this period, it got incredibly high. Now, that's, of course, the two crash zones that we saw over the last couple of years. But still, you want it to get to these types of reading points. And that's a 0.6 plus, And that's usually where the turnaround occurs. It didn't actually happen this time. You'll notice even in August during the pullback here, August 19th, we had that 0.61 percentage. And we had a few 0.5 days and then it turned around, trapped all of those puts and they expired worthless. So it's just an interesting point. Let's get into the technical analysis though and talk about what's actually happening here in the markets right now. So these are the zones that we drew up um, in terms of our live session. We specifically drew a box here looking for the gap close. This is where we expected the market to get to during the day. And we also expected the market to find some bearish pressure in this box and this is still where we're looking for that bearish pressure to potentially come back into the market basically what you're looking for is a peak a trough a lower peak and a lower trough in this box and that to show that yes this resistance that should be being found right now is becoming real and why should it be a bit of resistance well it all comes down to this 50 moving average level so you see here support 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 we know it's really important it's then come back up from the bottom up and it's retesting this 20 and the 50 zone and this box is drawn between both of those. So this should act as what we call dynamic resistance at this point. And if the bears are going to get back control of the market, this should be the zone they do it. And there are another couple of reasons why and we'll talk about it using options. I think that's the easiest way. So firstly, here are the options expiring 24th of September in in terms of this friday and what you'll notice is that there's a little bit less calls open now 
for that 450 strike. I would happen to guess that a few people realized they weren't going to get there. Yesterday with the bullish action, they closed <laughs> they closed as many as they can and take away some of that open interest. We then also have some 446s it looks like and a bunch of smattering of calls that came in near the Thursday and Wednesday session. So effectively a little bit more call action and a huge amount of puts at the 430. So we know that's where we got that put wall. We we spoke about that on the weekend video. We've talked about it consistently. And for anyone that picked up the market at 430, I'll give you a clap. Congratulations. I think you used options incredibly well to find those supports with the technical levels. And that's what it's all about here on the channel. Technical levels, finding data and information that makes sense to that. And then of course, being able to trade those zones. So somewhere in here around that 440, maybe 436 kind of level would be the preference for Wall Street to close Friday. Why? They would make maximum money. They would collect all the money over here. They would collect all the money over here. And most of the options would expire worthless. If we take a look out to October, and this is what makes me also still think that it's a bit strange if we don't get a second pullback, is there's a huge amount of 450 calls set for October. Now, they've been there for a little while and we're still watching them every day to make sure they're there. If there's a lot of open interest at one particular strike, it does tend to become a wall, whether it's a call wall or a put wall. And that's what's something that stops the market from being able to go through. Now, there's a bit of time in between here, but if we were in the week of this expiration underneath 450, do we think this would become a resistance? I would believe so. It's, it's the type of thing that I've seen in the past and it's not always 100%, but it's something we certainly do use. Let's move over to the SPX now and talk about this level. So again, the key level here is the 50 and the 20, which is on the higher time frame. But we've seen a few negative kind of signs in the market. One of them has been the crosses of moving averages. So here's the four hour 2050 exponential. I'll go back down and I know that it doesn't tend to actually show exactly uh, you know, bearish markets or anything like that, but it hasn't crossed for quite some time. And I don't take these crosses as, oh, I should short the market. Because what you'll notice is the market actually hits the low often when it crosses. Look at the cross, hits the low. Look at the cross, hits the low. So you don't want to take it from that aspect. But what you can do is you can say, okay, well, maybe these levels, once it comes up and tests them, will become a bit of dynamic resistance. So there's a lot of moving averages sitting at this zone. And again, look for the turnaround signs on the five minute, the 15 minute time frame, and look for those shorting opportunities. We've clearly got some great supports and resistances now. We've got that top end range here of 4490. That's going to be really a very key resistance if it does end up getting hit through the session. If we get back down underneath here, do something like this, then we move back to the 4400. The 4400 will act as a little bit of support, you would think. And then underneath there, I'm not even sure if there's anything other than the 43 at that point. So if you're looking for the bear side, that's what you're doing. If you're looking for the bull side, pull back back to here and then looking for a small rally through the Friday session. 4490 should be where it tops out. I would find it very unbelievable to get through there. And past 4490, <clears throat> you know we're making all-time highs. It's very unlikely that this actually stops it at that point. It's a full new V-shaped reversal. And I must say, I would be surprised if we don't get bearish action on the Friday. It's just surprising to me. It doesn't mean it's not possible. Uh, the price action right now is not giving us bearish signals. But remember, we're at that key moving average. The 50 moving average on the way up. Yes, it's been closed above, but the 20 is still holding it in. And anywhere in this zone is where the bears can come back in. So we'll join back up with our NASDAQ analysis in just a few moments. But I want to go through some stocks with you because we also have some signs coming in from the larger stocks. Let's take a look at Apple here. So Apple has a four hour 2050 cross. Now, of course, does that mean that much? Not really. Uh, you can see that 2050 crosses are not that sustained. Remember, being a bear in the market, you've got to be nimble. You've got to be quick and very, very fast. But we are up at the 20 moving average here. We have found a certain level of support and resistance off these levels before. So somewhere in this range, again, makes sense for Apple to potentially find some weakness. And if it finds weakness with a stock like this, what's going to happen? A huge amount of, of course, sellers will come in because if you're selling off Apple or you're selling Microsoft, it's such a huge portion of the indices, the rest of the indices will move with it. Look at the daily right on that 50 exponential moving average right around the zone again between the 20 and the 50 where the market could 
sell off if it was going to. Another thing you'll want to look at is options expiration for the Friday event. So you'll notice where all the options are, of course, that 150 strike, finding huge amounts of options on it, unlikely that Apple will want to be above that. And then you've got more options above and you've got kind of equaling options here. So if Wall Street could close it around there, you'd probably have what you would call maximum pain. All of these would options would expire worthless. All of these options would expire worthless and they would have smiley faces into the weekend. Very, very happy with themselves. So see how the market works? It's all a manipulation around certain key zones. Does it always work this way? No, sometimes it goes through to what we call the keeper and it keeps going through. But in these types of circumstances, we still want to pay attention, especially to the outlier positions. So when we have outlier positions, we need to look at that. Let's take a look at Tesla, see where the outlier positions are here. Tesla, frankly, pretty disappointing. I would have hoped for a better trade session considering the bullishness we saw in the market. 753 is lackluster. I mean, why can't we just break past 762? If I was uh, looking at it yesterday and, and trading it up, I would have been going to the bull side for the 762. I think it was a fair movement for it to occur. It didn't quite get there. Obviously, from the real catalyst, we're looking at it breaking through the 762 and beginning that rally to 800, which is the main aim here. Uh, got great trend line behind Tesla still. We've been detailing this every single day now for a while, and it has looked pretty damn bullish on the charts. If we look at the open interest, we spoke about this week how it was really unlikely that Tesla would actually go down. And one of the main reasons was there was way too many puts sitting on it uh, below 700. I mean, someone thought really bearishness on uh, Tesla. Look at this thing. It was 700 and the 690 and the 680 strikes, just so many puts and actually very little calls in comparison. So this person, whoever it is, is going to have a bad weekend because I think it's very unlikely that they are able to uh, profit from the 700 on the Friday. Go over to AMC now, what's going on here. Stuck within a range really on AMC, not much to note. I mean, we didn't get above that last previous session's highs, uh, which is over here. We're underneath the 50 moving average. We will revisit it once things get a little bit more, uh, I guess, aggressive to either side. And if you're looking for like that gap close, all you're doing is really just waiting for it to get above this high here and then trying to rally it into 44. So good luck on AMC, but at this stage still stuck within that range. Let's move over now to the US 100. So this is, of course, the NASDAQ. And this chart actually looks better than the S&P 500 on at least the futures contract. Take a look at this. So we've bounced down. We've then moved straight back up. We had our original support box, which when broken, we went short on, of course. And we know that we've got this great 15,180, 15,200 zone. Anyone that picked up the NASDAQ in the open yesterday, I think you're a big, smart, big brain person. You did very well. Um, we had heaps of signs saying go long there for the gap close. You got it. And then if you took profit on the day, well done to you as well. Because, I mean, you might have longer term plans, fair enough. But if you're looking at the trade, congrats. That's between the two moving averages, the 50 and the 20. You can see that perfect move into this level. Um, I'm really happy with that. And this is where you expect a little bit of resistance to come in. So let's move over to the NDX. See how it looks slightly different? There's the gap close, guys. And look at that right on that previous support becomes resistance level. This is why I've got an argument to be said here for the bears trying to have a go on Friday. Will they do it? Time's going to tell on the smaller time frames. Uh, that's for you guys to obviously break down and have a look at. We can't do five minute time frames on a video like this, but you you can clearly see this is this is the battle area. This is where they've got to uh, they've got to make it down. And this is what I would always do. I would set alerts at these kind of key zones. I would draw structure bases between the closes and the wicks. And then I would look for turnaround stories in this area towards the short side. Now, if you're a bull, all you're waiting for is hopefully a nice Friday to close above here. Then you can look for pullbacks, obviously resistance here. And then once you get through there, it looks like we're going back into the top of the trend line. I've men mentioned this before, but if you wanted to have an early Christmas present and that you were looking at cheaper prices in the market, imagine if our bottom ascending channel here was hit i mean this resistance has been incredibly phenomenal for us we have that base that's been formed several times and this would be fantastic imagine like a 14.1 on the nasdaq it would be a great level 
uh, for you to be looking at. So we've got all our key support zones. We've got the 14,800, we've got the 14,500, and then of course we've got that 14,1, 14,50 zone that if it was hit, uh, I would also have a smiley face because I think that would be a phenomenal pullback and also a very healthy type of correction in the markets at this time. Let's move over to the crypto markets. I mean, if you're looking at IWM, just, just quickly, uh, 225 basically was hit. Actually, I'll bring it up quickly. Let's have a look. So there it is. There's the 224, 225. This was the best index to be in yesterday. It makes sense. We talked about taking into this resistance. It's hit it. It does look pretty bullish on the charts here. It's right into kind of the weak highs. And if you get another bullish day, it seems inevitable that it's going to go for that 230 again. So if you're looking at the Russell, that's what you're doing. Let's move over to the crypto again, though. And we've got another interesting story here. We basically have closed below the 50 exponential and the 20. We've moved down. We've found that 26 level of support for Ethereum. We've moved back above 3000. And now we're contending with this 3200 resistance. You close above here and these two moving averages. Well, we can say that we're back in that uptrend and we've done the, the recovery we need to. But this is the danger zone right now. Uh, we've talked about it. We talked about the 3000 going to the 3200. This will be the zone that we watch into the weekend. And I think it's, it's pretty important. Bitcoin is the same thing. You can see all the moving averages here. So much weirdness going on when you've got a 200 a, a 50 and a 20 all sitting there it acts as a pretty big barrier for it to get through but the good news is if you get through it then it acts as great support so yes people will be taking profit around this area and what i have a feeling is going to happen is a little bit of sideways action and if we can bust through then it will look a lot better if you've been trading ada congrats to you i think you did a lot better if you watched the stream yesterday we talked about this exact zone that's a classic setup great base maximum pain theory we have that full stop hunt you can see the big rejection here by crypto and you know the thing is about crypto is it's clearly getting stop hunts put in it all the time now that means there's pretty good liquidity as well so you've got here resistance and then you've got a beautiful retest of that resistance as support and then of course the movement up first profit has been taken if you did get into this entrance here and uh phenomenal stuff let's hope we can go to 260 great chart fantastic setup congratulations if you've been in that one let's move over to the final things i want to say so of course friday we have fed chair powell speaking he'll be coming out at 10 a.m new york time something to be watching and i also just want to remind everybody that if you feel like you're going really bearish and stuff just remember the stats are always in the optimism favor in the market if you're going to be a bear be fast be nimble be quick don't think you're going to pick the next crash for the next decade here's the problem it's very rare and not many people are correct on it so what you're really doing is you're just basically saying okay can i find better zones to pick up can i trade the intraday volume if you trade then of course you can go bearish and you can go bullish but you'll need to be quick and uh, the stats here are even after such massive win streaks the win streaks tend to continue. So this is only stats. I mean, it's not proof or anything, but 92.9% .9 of the time we come back to the market in six months and it's it's up and it's up fairly hard. So please do remember that. I also just want to make a quick announcement. If you're interested in any of our courses, a lot of you guys have been enjoying them and stuff um, or any of the things that we do, I'd suggest you jump over to FX Evolution. Definitely get the uh, Pressic Builder. That's a great thing for rewarding your account when you make profit in it. So you might want to get that free class. And of course, we have um, released our options trading masterclass. Uh, mentoring's filled now for this month. But if you're interested in that, we can do it for the next month, coming months and ultimate masterclass. I don't really advertise it on these videos much, but if you are interested, come join us. It's a lot of fun and we're getting some great traders out of the community as well. So um, yeah, thanks so much, guys. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button if you enjoy the videos. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.